Hi everyone, this is Ying Tse from Machine Learning Group. It is my honor to introduce our work, Artificial Intelligence for Drug Discovery. So why drug discovery is so important? Because it has great business value. It is estimated that by the end of 2025, the global market of drug discovery is expected to reach $71 billion by 2025. However, from discovering a new drug until the drug is finally approved by FDA, it is a very long process. As shown in this picture, it takes six and a half years to design a new drug and apply some preclinical experiments. Preclinical experiments means that some experiments on cells and animals but not allowed on human. After that, it takes about seven years for the clinical trials, which means that we are allowed to test a new drug on humans, but with limited number. And after that, the FDA will approve one of the most successful drugs. So we can see that drug discovery is costly and time consuming. And we want to use artificial intelligence to help speed up this process. But as shown here, the preclinical trials and the clinical trials both require wet experiments. So we focus on the first part, the drug discovery. So there are three things before preclinical. The first thing is target discovery and validation. Here, the target is some protein or enzymes or nucleic acid in our body. And its activity can be modified by some drugs resulting in specific effect. In target discovery, given a specific disease, we want to try our best to figure out all possible targets. This is what drug target discovery does. After that, we use the target validation to filter out the wrong targets. The second step is screening. Virtual screening means that we use computer science program to calculate the binding affinity of the drug and the target. And we search some library, and we want to find out some possible molecules so that they can be made drugs in the future. And the main techniques in this part include docking and molecular dynamics. After that, we move to the lead generation and optimization process. This is because in the previous step, we obtain some molecules, but the potency can, be still, can still be improved. So we want to improve the molecules from the previous step. And in this stage, we need some techniques including generating new molecules. We need some techniques about molecule protein prediction. And we need some techniques on retrosynthesis. We can see that in the above three stages, the molecule modeling is important task for all the above stacks. So we want to work on this direction. And we propose a new technique, dual view molecule pre-training for, for these tasks. So before going into the technical details, we should know how to represent a molecule. So take the artemis artemisinin, a very famous drug, as an example here. This is the 2D representation, where the atoms are nodes and the edge are bonds of a molecule. After using the depth first search and some specific rules, like how to break a ring, how to use branch, we can convert the 2D graph into a 1D smell string. So this is the basic representations of molecule. Considering that a molecule has two at least two types of representation, correspondingly, there are two types of the models. So if we regard a molecule as a smell, as a smell string, we can use transformer to deal with the molecule. Uh, let us use the pre-training as an example here. The input is a smile sequence. We randomly mask some tokens, and we use the transformer to reconstruct the masked tokens. We can also regard the molecule as a 2D graph. And we can also mask some atoms and let the gene model to recover the masked atoms. So basically, there are two types of techniques. They are good, but previously, the two types of models are independently used. But is that everything? Let's see some cases. Here we conduct rich experiments and show some typical examples here. In the left, two, in the left part, the, about, on the molecule property prediction task, GN succeeds on the, on the left two molecules, but transformer fails. For the right two part, transformer succeeds 
but GN fails. We can see that GN actually favors the molecules with rich structures. For example, more than three rings concatenated together, but it does not favor the molecules with relatively long chain. And in comparison, transformer favors molecules with relatively long chains, but it does not favor the molecule with rich structure. So they are complementary to each other, and motivated by this, we propose a new model that leverage the two models together. So this is our solution called dual view molecular pretraining. In our framework, an input molecule is represented by two views, a sequence view, which is a smile string, and a graph view, which is a 2D graph representation. We feed the smiles into the transformer, and we feed the graph into the graph neural network. We first apply the mass language modeling laws to both transformer and the GN module. And the transformer module and the GN module can output a feature for, a, for the same small molecule. Because the features are from the same small molecule, they should be similar in some latent space. So motivated by this, we use the cosine similarity to measure, to measure their similarity in some latent space and force the two models to minimize the gap of the two representations. So this is our basic framework. After that, we try our model on some tasks. The first task is called the molecular property prediction, and the data set is the molecular net, which is the benchmark data set for molecular property prediction. We conduct experiments on seven tasks, and we only, we only show three results here. The three tasks are BBBP, which is a task about to predict the blood brain a barrier concentration of drugs. And the second task in the clean tox, which is related to predict the toxicity of drugs. And the third task is about the prediction of the ability of inhibiting HIV replications. We can see that compared to previous baseline, compared to the transformer with mass language model only, and compared to GN with less mass language modeling only, our method achieved the best results among all of them. So this shows the effectiveness of our method. And let's see some cases how our method works. After using our proposed model, we can see that the model can handle the molecules with both long, with both long chains and relatively rich structures. This shows the effectiveness of our proposed method. In addition to the prediction task, we also apply our model to retrosynthesis. And the task is, given a target molecule, we want to use some relatively easily obtained small molecules to make the target. So this is retrosynthesis. After using our proposed method, we can see that on two benchmark data sets, our method further improved the baseline mass, improves the baseline, and achieved state-of-the-art results on these two tasks. This shows the effectiveness of our method again. So for future, there are many interesting directions, and we are wait for your collaborations. The first is that we will try more tasks on drug discovery. And the second is that we will design more advanced models. For example, how to design more powerful GN models and how to use a single model to cover both transformer and the GNN. And third, we will try more data. Currently, we use 100 million data and we, we want to try more in the future. So thanks for your attention and I look forward to your collaborations. Next, my colleague Tong will introduce his work on drug discovery. Thanks, Yingce. This is Tong Wang. I will introduce another research project on drug discovery, accurate drug target interaction prediction for drug discovery. The war between disease and human beings has never ended. The traditional drug discovery process is very long. From initial drug discovery to get FDA's approval, it usually takes more than 10 years. Furthermore, the drug design cost is very high, which usually spends 1 billion US dollars for a novel drug. Therefore, use machine learning and deep learning to aid drug discovery, also known as CADD, can save lots of time and money consumption. The CADD can be divided into four steps. First is target identification and validation. The second one is water screening. 
and the third one, we need to optimize the properties of drug candidates and design synthesis passes. All drug candidates should be strictly evaluated by wet experiments and clinical trials. Although CADD can reduce the cost for drug discovery, the accrued the accuracy, however, don't meet our requirements since different targets and drugs vary a lot from each other. So in our research, we focus on the second step, drug water screening, and design novel algorithm to improve the accuracy and the generalization ability. As shown in the upper right figure, drug water screening is to select active drug candidates from tremendous data sets, which consists of millions to billions of chemical compounds. This task can be divided into two steps. First is the active binding prediction, which selects drug candidates that can bind to the protein target. Second, for the active binding drug candidates, we need to determine their native binding poles to the corresponding target protein. As shown in the lower right figure, the receptor protein is shown as cartoon, and the drug is shown as stick. The region where drug binds to the target protein is called the binding pocket. Our goal is to predict whether the drug can bind to the protein, and if so, to determine the binding poses. For this task, the key challenge is to how to represent and distinguish the following three kinds of interactions. That is, the intramolecular information of the receptor, the intramolecular interaction of the ligand, and most importantly, the intermolecular information between the ligand and the receptor. The most classic approach is molecule docking. As shown in the right figure, docking is a kind of molecular dynamics that simulates the movements of the chemical compounds with physical force fields. The docking software packages, such as Asmina, can estimate whether a ligand can bind to a target receptor and provide the corresponding binding confirmation. Since the targets and the drugs vary from each other, the accuracy is the largest challenge. With the development of deep learning, many new algorithms have been proposed, which can be divided into two classes. The first one is to take intramolecular and intermolecular interactions as a whole. It uses the whole structure of the docked poles as input and make predictions both for active binding and poles. One of them is GTGAT that uses graph attention and achieves the best performance. However, this approach cannot distinguish intermolecular interactions from intramolecular interactions explicitly. Another approach models intramolecular interactions of ligand and receptor respectively, and the moon is the best algorithm of this approach. However, since it doesn't use the docked poles, the intermolecular information cannot be explicitly modeled. Therefore, in our study, we propose the intermolecular graph transformer that uses a three-way deep neural network to model three kinds of interactions respectively. Our IGT model can be divided into three parts. First is a feature extraction module to directly extract intermolecular and intramolecular information from novel designed atom and bond features. Second is a message passing module. And finally, the readout module predicts the final output. So in our model, the most important module is the message passing module that has a survey design with repeated building blocks to model interactions within the ligand, interactions within the receptor, and most importantly, the interactions between ligand and the receptor respectively. We first compare the performance of active binding prediction of our model with other state-of-the-art algorithms on the most widely used dataset, DODE. As shown in the figure and the table, 
our model XT achieves the best performance on all metrics compared with state-of-the-art approaches. Compared with the active binding prediction, post-prediction is much more useful for real application in drug discovery. It is worth noticing that since the second approach doesn't use the dot pose as input, it cannot predict the active pose. When evaluated for the active pose prediction, IGT achieved the best performance on all metrics compared with gated GAT and docking. <clears throat> Given the prominent performance of IGT, we further use it to identify active binding drugs against the SARS-CoV-2 main proteins. As shown in the left figure, the predicted binding pulse and the ground truth are colored green and blue respectively. The binding pocket of the receptor protein is colored pink with surface. Our predicted binding pulse is very close to the native structure, which is resolved by X-ray. Therefore, IGT model successfully detects the near native pulse against SARS-CoV-2. Furthermore, from the middle and the right panels, that predict binding pulse forms similar interactions that can also be found in the native structure. Given the significant scientific implications and huge application potential in healthcare and biomedical industry, our approach can be expected to provide drug discovery service for industrial customers. Second, the massive compounds data and the huge computational intensive tasks require either to provide huge storage and computational resources. Thus, the availability of such technologies in error will also provide Microsoft with more business opportunities from the Microsoft Cloud. Finally, our protocol predicts active binding drugs with property with proper binding poses, apply for rational drug design and contribute to process medicine. Thank you.